to our final episode of Kickback with Kelly and Barbara, and it appears that we have saved the best for last. Hey, Barbara? That's right. We've got sports presenter Duncan Elias as well as pundit Patrick Come Kinghorn. On. Be honest. How many people turned you down before you quit? <laughs> I've been working in the same office as you for I four mean... months. How many people turned you down before you resorted to us? Secret. Moving on <laughs> quite rapidly. <laughs> So these guys are no strangers in the sporting industry, which is thankfully making a little bit of a comeback. But let's talk a little bit about you guys first. Tell us pre-COVID, um, what you do for work, you know, what's, what's your history like? We'll start with Duncan. Oh. Oh, be first. Be, oh, be a <laughs> I've known Duncan for, for quite a few years in various guises in sporting institutions in Singapore. And I was very fortunate because I was uh, with you in the SEA Games, mm -hmm. Kelly, working for Media Corp. And uh, One Play Sports, um, the COO there, uh, Anthony Raj, I met with him and he said, oh, we're going to be doing the Singapore Premier League and we're going to try and do it a bit bigger and a bit better. And I, obviously Duncan was... I think commentating and presenting for large parts of last season and they offered me the chance to, to come and commentate on the Singapore Premier League and I was delighted because I've been working a lot in India in the last three years and this was obviously no more than six or seven weeks before Covid struck and I was blessed to come back to Singapore full time. It's obviously very unfortunate what's happened with, with the Covid but from a personal a perspective. I'm very grateful because I've been in and out of Singapore for, for 12 years and to, to, to be stuck here. For you got stuck expression. here at the right time, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, <laughs> I think there are definitely worse places in the world to be stuck. So. Yeah. But, yeah, but you're so involved in so many different sports. I mean, like volleyball, snooker, football, yeah. everything you commentate these. I mean, you can watch a random uh, boxing match. Yeah. Um, Should have heard him at the Sea Games. And, and, then, <laughs> and then, yeah, this familiar voice just pops up. And I'm like, oh, wait, I know that voice. Is it like, is it like the, the fingers screeching on a blackboard when you hear it? No, <laughs> no. no I mean, again, they just they bleed. But At my age, know. I mean, obviously, you three of you are very young and you've still got your best years ahead of you. But I'm kind of winding down now. So I, I, I prefer actually working on sports that I've never done before. And as you say, there's not many left now. Obviously, football, if you're doing this for a living, football is essentially where you're going to get the most work because there's more football than anything else. But I never shy away from doing anything. You mentioned the volleyball. I mean, that was the, the big thing I did in India last year, the Pro Volleyball League. And it was great fun. I've never worked on volleyball before. And you get passionate and you learn about all these sports. So it's fantastic. And how does that work? The amount of research that goes into commentating on a sport that yeah. you are not actually familiar I've with? I've got no life. Barbara. So basically, so that's my, all he does, my research. life revolves around writing notes. And I'm very old school, not like you modern kids with your iPads and stuff. And Duncan will testify to this. Well, no, I'm I've, all cards I've seen and this. Pens. It's cue cards galore. Yeah, I'm like Rain Man with it. So, yeah, but I enjoy it. I mean, listen, there are much worse uh, industries to be in. I kind of wish I'd paid attention more at school and got a proper job. But um, yeah, so I'm very blessed, really. Sounds no, like a proper job to me. What about you, Duncan? Job. Well, I work with Patrick, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, at One Place Sports. Uh, but I've, I was, I've been there at One Place Sports for about, I think, 18 months now. You were the first employee, weren't you? I was the first one. Wow! wow. Yeah, first one at One Place Sports. Uh, and still going strong. So I, I present uh, sport. I'm also part of the content team at One Place mm -hmm. Sports. But we have the passion working on football, but also on community and, uh, and you know, school sports as well. And uh, I'm also doing, like, just random sports and just learning as, as I go. And I think that's the way it is with you mm. as well, Patrick. So like, I want to know, what is yeah. the weirdest sport that you guys have had to commentate on? I did the uh, two sports at the Sea Games in, because I spent two years working for Astro in Malaysia, and I did the Sea Games in there, which was 2017, because mm -hmm. I saw you there as well. Yep. And uh, temping bowling and the speed skating. I think that having speed skating in an ice rink in the middle of Kuala Lumpur was quite interesting. So, yeah, 10 pin bowling and speed you skating. You got me some interesting terms in 10 pin bowling, yeah, by the way. Yeah, turkey. Do you know what a turkey is, Barbara? Is it not what we have at Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm just like laughs> it's three strikes. I think it's three strikes in a row, isn't it, a turkey? Are you only really? Good at four or three? I just is can't even remember now. What about yeah. you? What's the weirdest thing? Um, actually, it's a sport that we, we spoke about, volleyball. I, I never did it until the Asian Schools Games in Samarang, Indonesia. And we went there just to, to broadcast whatever sport we could get our hands on at, mm. uh, at that point. And uh, there was an opening to, to do a volleyball match between, I think, Indonesia and Thailand, a non-Singapore contest. So I was just learning the names mm -hmm. and learning the sport a, as it went. And, and you that's got to be the, the hardest as well, right? When you've got yeah. like the Thai names and you're not familiar with them and you've got to try and say them quickly because you're trying to get through a sport. And it rotates as well, right? They, they just go up and go in. So I'm like, I'm just like looking at the sheet of paper of the names as well as like trying to keep score of, of what's actually happening on the court. So yeah, that was, that was pretty fun. Have you ever had to do Kabaddi? 
Because, buddy, I funny. Because <laughs> I was going to say that's a pretty weird. There's actually a very sport. sad story about that. But I was offered the job at Star Sports India, which are huge, mm. um, to, to to be the sort of they, they wanted to get a white face presenting it because they wanted to try and take <laughs> it internationally. So I did go into long the negotiations and chats about that, but for reasons which we won't go into now, because it was a bit of a nightmare, it didn't end up happening. But yes, I've, I've, I'm familiar with Kabaddi. And that, in India, would be after cricket, obviously, the IPL rules the roost there. Kabaddi is more popular than even the Football League there, the, the wow. um, uh, ISL, so yeah. Their prerequisite was hair. Yeah, probably. Is probably there? green eyes as well, you didn't fit the bill. Do, or that you would not feel comfortable doing. I, you know something, I love all sports. Australian rules football, I'll still watch it, but I can't quite figure it out. That's about the only one, I think. Aussie it's just a football. cross between cricket and football yeah. and rugby. Well, it's one of those rare sports, by the way. Nobody knows the origins of Australian rules football. There's no, you know, like most sports, like, you know how... History you know how, how it came you know about. You know how rugby was invented because yeah. a boy at rugby school picked up the ball and ran with it. But Aussie rules, the only thing they can come up with is because of the pitch that cricketers in Australia, back in goodness knows when, used it as a way of keeping fit in yeah. the off-season when the they off couldn't season. play on the wet pitches. Fair but enough. Yeah, but Aussie rules. So what I'm too. curious to know, before we move on to uh, COVID, Duncan, congratulations. You were recently promoted to daddy. Yes, thank you um, for that. How has, <laughs> how has COVID treated you and little one in managing work? and everything like that? Uh, it's tough. Uh, so me and my wife, Natasha, just the two of us, her parents were supposed to come down. Uh, they live in Canada. They couldn't come down. Mm. We couldn't get a helper. So it was just the two of us just slugging it out. And then credit to her as well, because after my two weeks of paternity leave, I was back working uh, yep. on One Place Sports and on Get Active TV. And so she, it was just uh, him, uh, Caden, and, and Natasha at home for, for most of it. So and how's she doing? Super. She's, she's doing better now. Yeah, I'm going to ask about now. the mother. Yeah. Everyone forgets about the mother. Never mind the child. How is the mother doing? How's Natasha doing? She's doing, she's doing good. She's doing good. Um, you know, she's going out now more often and I'm taking charge at night and she's going out and like having her little girl's night. Oh, that's uh, just, good. Yeah, some freedom Aww. as well just to go out. So that's Living good. your best daddy, daddy life. <laughs> so obviously COVID hit the world uh, very, very differently. I mean, different countries locked down at different points in time, um, different sporting organi organizations, uh, put a standstill mm -hmm. to the leagues and everything like that at different points in time. I think the Singapore Premier League was one of the last few. Yeah. Like, we really held it off until it was absolutely it was, necessary. And that was a real shame, that, because the last... It was the last thing, the last couple last of thing weeks, that people had to the watch. The last couple of weeks, obviously, the Singapore Premier League, which Duncan is incredibly passionate about, and that passion rubs off on me, has struggled to get any kind of recognition across Asia, really, never mind the world. But it was only us and Belarus that were still going at the end. And I think the last game before they pulled the plug was Albrecht, Albrecht Tanjong and Tanjong Pagar. Yeah. And that game was being previewed in the written press all yeah. over the world. And the numbers, because we obviously stream the games live on One Play Sports, along with the Football Association of Singapore social media channels. The numbers were huge. So for that one game, we had the Come spotlight on. on. Just and again, <laughs> listen. In it was the, the only in, thing you're not going to complain, watch. though. In the scheme of things, obviously, with what's going on in the world, sport, though we're still passionate about it and we want it to come back, it's not the most important thing. But there's a part of me that thinks if we could have found some way yeah. to power through, we might have given the, the, the Singapore Premier League a platform that it would have never had before. So what I want to know is from your points of view, how, how, what were your thoughts on how different countries and different sporting organizations handled these gradual closures of sporting events? Like, could it have been done better? Was it done, was it done well? What are your thoughts? Unfiltered. Well, listen, Singaporeans like to moan, all right, guys? Yeah. I think you'll all, you'll all hold your hands up to that. It's a great... Singaporeans have got many great traits, but they're... They Two things I can never work out about Singaporeans. The moaning when this country is like one of the modern marvels of the planet. Yep. And also the queuing at chicken and rice stalls. <laughs> There's two chicken and rice stalls next to each other. They both said in chicken and rice, but you'll queue for an hour... Are you rather cute it's for It's a better hour? one. Why because would you not go for the yeah. better one? chicken and rice. the fact that you said chicken and, and rice, rice yeah. instead yeah. of just chicken, chicken rice. Is just it's chicken rice. How long have you been? You okay. are not local. <laughs> At that point, I'm going to take a pause because I'm just in a little bit of shock right there. We're going to go for a short break. When we return, we're going to continue this chicken and rice debate on Kickback <laughs> with Kelly and Barbara. Don't go away.
Welcome back to Kickback with Kelly, Barbara, Duncan and Patrick and apparently chicken and rice. But it's chicken and rice. If you say chicken rice, that suggests the rice has something chickeny about it. But the chicken is a separate entity. No, so no, it's no, chicken no. and no, rice. Okay, no, so do you know how to say it in, in Mandarin? No. Okay, so in Mandarin it's called ji fan. Chicken, rice. But I'm saying it's chicken and the, yeah, but you cook the, the, the rice, rice and with chicken the ch are separate entities. They deserve to be separated. No, but they're also cooked together. Well, they're not cooked together, are you they? Yeah, they are. The stock to cook the you rice. Use the stock yeah, that's the, not cooking. the chicken's not with the rice until it's on the plate. Well, it depends, actually. Some people actually prefer to keep it dunked in. That is a separate conversation. We're going to continue <laughs> about sport and COVID. Um, OK, so let's talk a little bit about what happened when COVID hit. Obviously, for you guys personally, how did it affect you guys, Duncan? He's, he's had enough time. To <laughs> I, th I think from a, from a personal point of view and from a selfish point of view, we want the sport to just carry on, right? Because mm, that's yeah. what we love, we're very passionate about. But in the, the greater scheme of things, obviously, you know, health is, is more important. And we saw, I don't think we all knew how badly this pandemic would be. You know, SARS has nothing on this, looking back at it. And, and yep. we thought, yeah, it might be another SARS, we might, we'll get through it. And SARS, I think we just saw football and sports in general just stopped for a little bit, for a week or two weeks, and then it started back as if nothing happened. Mm. But then as things happened, then we realised, oh, this is really um, something serious, something that's really going to impact not just Singapore, not just Asia, but the whole world. And everyone just needed to like, find different ways to engage with the audience. And, and I, I think uh, as, as sports companies in the world, it's either you stand still, and die, or, or you just move with the times, and I think a lot of, of sports have gone virtual in that sense. So let's talk about that pivot then, because obviously with sports going virtual, I mean, Formula One for a period of time, mm. they decided to get everyone in simulators and racing on the F1 game, but like, it's a little bit different for certain sports. There are certain sports like Taekwondo, for example, that have gone into eSports, so you can actually fight virtually with each other, and it's quite a cool thing. Um, but that is what the Olympic Council was hoping they would take the whole e virtual eSports, actually making it active eSports as opposed to just playing Counter-Strike well, or Dota. Patrick knows yeah. eSports well. Yeah, eSports is already like one of these sort of growth phenomenons, even before COVID. Again, Kelly, mm -hmm. we were at the SEA Games in the Philippines in December. And in the big IBC, they had the giant screen for all the, the international press as they go in. And the only thing that people would stop and watch was when they had the eSports competitions that yep. got the, the biggest crowds and obviously we all got our heads together at one place sports obviously uh, teamed up with john young of, of sport sg and, and get active sg to create the program and that you guys have been so good on and we started doing some interactive uh, fifa tournaments this incredible concept where you've got 11 players dotted around the same country coming together to play and then most recently we've had q sports because you, you talk about taekwondo obviously the reality is you're not going to get away with any kind of contact yep. sports but something like q sports we had all the players wearing masks mm -hmm. they were cleaning the balls in between matches you know only a very limited number of people in the studio so there are ways you can work around it but you know we're talking about this COVID thing as if it's in the past tense the reality is we it's don't know what's okay. going to happen next week yeah. let alone um, next year no we're having this chat like everyone says all right we'll, we'll postpone and let's let's start things again in 2021 no COVID is not a know. new year new week <laughs> with COVID you know, the, it will carry the, on the terrifying thing is I think you know I'm not an educated man when it you only you only you know read you know what you read uh, with a great article in Rolling Stone magazine that put it into perspective <laughs> they say what can't magazine? Believe, I must Rolling Stone magazine <laughs> are you not a subscriber um, yeah so basically the quickest vaccine ever invented by man took four years to develop and safely introduce, and that was for the mumps. Yep. And if you go by the school of thought that we're not going to get back to normal until a safe vaccine is found, then goodness knows how long it's going to last. And the problem you've got with rushing vaccines through is once they say, right, this is the vaccine, mm. you then can't test other vaccines because you're going with one yep. and that's it. So we could be in this for a little a longer year, I think. And I, and I also think that top-level sport will return, as we've already seen, but yep. the lower-level sports, I think it will take a long time for it to return. Then the reason is, you know, top-level sports, they're getting tested every day yeah. or uh, twice yeah. a day, and, and they have the, the money to do that. That has to be so painful. I can't imagine it's just like, like someone stick up your nose twice oh. a day. Have you had it done before? No. no. Uh, Mum had it done. How was it? it was a, a different kind of sensation. It didn't hurt, but... It was kind of enjoyable, actually, for me. It was like kind if you've got enjoyable. a scratch, it, Who are you? if you've a nice got a tickly yeah. throat, it's exactly. just like, oh yeah, that's the spot. <laughs> that's um, so I'm curious, from your point of view, how did people react to esports, like fans and everything? Because sports, in, in general, is a very you know people get so involved, so emotionally involved in same. sports. W did we have the same level when it came to it's came the to esports? But it's clearly a, a different audience. I genuinely think the the 
people that have crossed over from the real version to the virtual version is minimal, if I'm going to be honest. But there's an existing base of these esports guys, and it's our own little community. I mean, we're doing another big tournament on One Play Sports starting this weekend, the VPG Asian Super League. And of course, it's not like real football where the guys have a game and then have got a rest for two or three days. Mm. These guys are playing like sometimes multiple matches on the same night, and there's big money involved as well. There is so huge money involved. The reality in is, if that's the only kind of sporting content we can get, there are people out there that like it, so why not do it? And the people will consume. Okay, so then. Things, like Barbara said just now, things mm. are slowly coming back, right? We're seeing the football matches come back in drips and drabs in different leagues and what have you. But let's talk about the things that uh, are taking place in other forms, like the virtual marathons. It's just been announced that yeah. the Stan Sharp Marathon is going to be uh, done virtually this year. Obviously, the London Marathon, we had James Walton on, who's running it virtually this year as well. What's your take on all of these virtual editions? But again, I think to, to satisfy sponsors and to try and keep events alive, they've got to do it. I saw that standard chartered uh, marathon press conference yesterday, and it looks like they've got some great initiatives to try and keep people engaged. Um, and again, as Duncan said, we might have to get used to it because you don't know where it's going to lead. I think one thing's for sure, when it eventually does come back in its real form, whether it's a month, six months, or even a year or so, we're going to appreciate it a lot more. We took... You just. Yep. Uh, this is a defining moment in our lifetimes. As I said, I'm older than you guys, but I think even really? with my tell. extra... Thank you, Barbara. Well, <laughs> even with that extra 20 years I've got behind me, there'll be nothing as significant as this that happens in the world for the rest of my life, and I'd imagine not the rest of yours. So I think it's crazy. I was going to say, I'm 60 years old. I, my, well, it's, we were talking about this earlier. I'm 45 in a couple of weeks, so I'm nearer to death than I am to life. You two have still got, and you three, rather, have still got your best years ahead of you. I don't want to depress, I'm depressing myself I was just going to say, this is yeah. rather this morbid take a discussion. <laughs> Come on, let's, uh, end, let's end your series on a positive note. Yeah, D Duncan, what, what about you? What's your take on it? I think virtually, I think, um, you know, physically, it's like the Standard Chartered Marathon. People had to, to come to Singapore to take part in it. I think virtually we had the, the conversation with the Standard Chartered people, mm -hmm. uh, and they said, you know, they expect actually more sign-ups than the actual marathon, physical marathon itself. So I think more people will be uh, involved in the Standard Chartered Marathon this year. And also, I think uh, there's like different routes where people who sign up from all around the world will be able to like have a running route, and there's augmented reality that will be introduced as well. So they may run and see different parts of Singapore: the north, the west, the south, the east. So that's that's fantastic. I think technology has definitely stepped in with COVID Massively. to help. And I think it's also just accelerated. I mean, the amount of stuff that's now gone on green screen, the amount of stuff where now mm. you're trying to have these immersive virtual tours for museums, for for districts and, and stuff like that, just to try and get people to do virtual tourism as well. Right. I think it's quite interesting how all of this has come into play and how you're now doing virtual tourism via sport, which I don't think is something that we'd considered or contemplated before as much. I think they're looking at that with the, the HSBC Singapore Sevens that was postponed. I mean, I think One Play Sports is currently working with a Sport SG and the HSBC Sevens people to create something which is, as you suggested, a fully virtual reality experience as if you're there, you know, you can go into different rooms, you know, as you say, put the goggles on. I mean, the stuff they can do now is incredible, but we can kid ourselves all we like. It's not, however it's not you shake same. it down, not a replacement. But as I say, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Hopefully when it comes back, it will lead to a real resurgence of, of live sport, particularly in Singapore. Well, let's be brutal on this, a bit like the Singapore Premier League. It's kind of floundered and been neglected a little bit in terms of public interest. So when we eventually get the hard reset, hopefully we can uh, take uh, as an opportunity in Singapore to build on all sports, not just the Singapore Premier League, and get that national stadium, which is 200 yards away from us, full up on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah that so would be nice. Just to wrap up this segment, uh, we want to hear from you guys. What are your hopes and wishes for sport going forward as we kind of enter this new normal? I think a huge marketing plan needs to be put in place for the return of sport. Like, as you said, uh, the Singapore Premier League and a lot of sport in Singapore has been neglected. There's not been much spotlight on it. But when it does return, I think it needs to come back with a bang. Like, mm. like sport has returned big spotlight on it. And I'm, there's been a lot of budgets that have been, you know, not used for certain events. Just put that all together just to create a, a big marketing plan for Singapore sport. My hope really is, obviously, the delayed Tokyo Olympics, I think, could be a watershed moment if they can get that as a it's planned, I think, to be on. As we speak this time next year, it's going to be reshaped. And then, of course, the Sea Games is coming up in uh, Hanoi. So I think, if, I think if we're in a position where the Sea Games goes ahead in Hanoi, that's probably the signal that everything's going to go ahead as yep. planned. But who knows? Fingers crossed then. We're going to go for a short break. But when we return, we're going to put these two gentlemen through their paces on our final edition of Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. Don't go anywhere.
welcome back to Kickback with Kelly, Barbara, Duncan and Patrick on our Return of Sport finale. Um, I would, I, this is the last show, right? So I'm just seeing what I can take home from the set. You won't be needing this stuff anymore, will you? Well, Barbara, Barbara I made Twine that. that Did you, so. Is this homemade? Yeah. yeah. You are a multi So it's an, young lady, it's an old plastic Maria. bottle. I think it had my uh, post-workout like BCAA things in it. And you just you okay. reuse plastic, right? It's just Upcycling. a nice thing to do. Is it? Recycle, kids. Upcycle. Exactly. So... We have a little challenge for the two of you, just because you're so heavily involved Doesn't in involve the sport. It involves riding world. on a bike. I've seen your challenges, and it usually <laughs> ends with someone having a heart attack. I don't, I, is no, 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 Is no. it verbal rather than physical? It is. It's vocal, since the two of you are clearly very good at that. Um, have you ever played Taboo? No. I don't know. I don't, taboo. So you're given a word. Okay. Um, and you have to describe whatever it is. So, for example, if I say... Uh, Kelly. If my word is Kelly, right? If on the paper it says Kelly, there are a list of words that I can't say as I'm trying to make Duncan guess the word Kelly. Okay, like radiant and beautiful. Yes, that exactly. Kind of. Wouldn't be able to use those words. I'd Look say uh, short hair, um, my sibling. You know, so you you I have. You're talking about me there for a minute. Sorry, <laughs> I, you said short hair. Not no, she no would have said no, no hair. hair. Okay. Yeah. All okay. Right. So you got we'll, it? I'll try okay. and pick it up. Yeah. So I'm going to give you the theme. The okay. theme is sports. Okay. So it should be pretty straightforward for you guys. I will show you the word, and underneath it, there are a list of words that you can't use in your description. And, I've got to get and he's and got Duncan to guess has to guess, guess okay. the have to main guess. word. Yeah. Okay? We're going to see how many you guys can go through. Okay. And how many you end up so passing got, or failing. So I've got to. You've got to describe it. Uh, I'm the describer. Duncan's the guesser. Yes, yes. you got it, Patrick. Okay. Wow. <laughs> he's just stalling <laughs> for time. He's seeking clarity. Don't worry. Okay. We're not going to end the episode until right. okay. we get through all eight of them. Is it right? time based or uh, until, we've, until we get it all? It's going to be out of the eight. Look, it's it's going to okay. be out of the eight. Let's see how many we can but get. This is going to be easy because Duncan is the principal presenter at One Place Sports. I'm the commentator, so we work like this on a regular basis. We have We've just got this special connection. Okay, let's put this right. tele okay. telepathy to good right. use. So, um, All right, are, are we ready? Okay. Ready so to this go? Is the first yep. one. Yeah. I can only use one word. Or I can use. No, you can. You can okay. describe your it first me. love. Football. Wow. I thought you were going to say your wife. No, no. <laughs> Dude. No, because I know, what Nothing. He means. I know what he means. Nothing but net. Basketball. Wow. He's really thinking about yeah. this. Usually people just blurt out whatever they Short can. Short corner. Hockey. Not bad. Spike. Volleyball. Okay, these are really easy. Come on then. Five meter badge. Five meter badge. You can't just repeat the word. It's not going to change. Doggy. Hey? Doggy. Surely I'm not allowed to say whatever I'm thinking. <laughs> doggy paddle. Canoe. Doggy paddle in a canoe? I don't know what a doggy paddle is. Goggles. Swimming. What did he mean by sh uh, short? Decathlon. Uh, athletics? Track and field. No. Uh -huh. He's doing really well. Yeah, I'm impressed. Um, Don't use hand signals. Flat tire. Formula One. Um, Racing. Um, 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 uh, spoke. Spoke. Don't Broken use chain. your hands. Um, bicycle. Uh, Tour de France. No, well, that's, what's the genre? Uh, blank, blank here <laughs> at the moment. The Tour de France is in what genre? Uh, Biking, cycling. Yeah, cycling. Okay, yeah. Right. Um, oh, this is a this is this one's a bit of a toughy one. Um, you wanted to say that, didn't you? PB Sindhu. Badminton. Wow! We got that in no. about you three see. and a half minutes. Bad. All eight of them. We know our onions. I, I was I was fully expecting you to end up using some of the words in there, but no, you thought about it. He was. No, so I got a swimming one. Come, cook yeah. the five meter badge. You get your five meter badge for swimming. Did you never get your five? That's the first badge you get. Five meter badge. I didn't know you have it's badges. a very English thing. You can swim. It's right? a very English thing. Like I remember getting. I remember <laughs> getting my. Engli I remember getting my five meter badge. Yeah. Yeah. So you're 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 more my age, Kelly, aren't you? So yeah. Apparently so. Apparently so, gentlemen. It has been an absolute pleasure having you guys on on our final episode. I know what of am Kick I going to do? Now? That was the first thing I scrolled down to on all the the sports and social media channels for my you know thrice weekly hit of a bit of Kelly and Babs. I know. Well, you're just going to have to give us a call now. Okay. Ah uh, well. I know that call. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
It has been so much fun over the past four or five months with you guys, either on the morning show or Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. I think Barbara and I have thoroughly enjoyed bringing you all this content oh, you know we over have. the past few months. And guys, it's been so nice working in close proximity with you lot as well. Do it's come really and visit. Fun. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we Do will. Yeah. I Especially will. you, Barbara. Okay, all right, moving on. <laughs> oh, Pat. <laughs> Well, oh, once again, thank you so much for joining us here on Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. It's been an absolute pleasure. We hope to catch you again soon on Get Active TV. Bye-bye. Bye. We're trying not to shed a tear. <laughs>